All right, guys, we are back here with uh, Bill Winky again, and we're going to cover, uh, we've covered a lot of topics already today, but we were going to discuss the unknown or the unseen expenses that come with, with owning land. So, you know, we went through the steps, we've made the jump, we've bought the farm, and, and now what are you going to do with it? How are you going to pay for it? And, and what are the unknowns that you're going to have coming your way? Yeah. Well, I think, uh, and again, you know, we've talked about the fact that I, I'm more comfortable with the recreational land side of it, you know, because the tillable, um, you've got to be, that's a different world. Yeah. You know, and you can talk to that, you know, the, the equipment and, and everything involved there. Uh, the recreational side, you can get by with the old Ford stuff that your grandpa drove. Right. You know, so, so my, my mindset is uh, if I can figure out some way to get somebody to loan me equipment or, you know, get it you know, some way where I don't have to buy it, mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to do. Or if I can't, if I have to buy it, I'm going to go really cheap. Because, like, let's say, oh, I love that 85-horsepower John Deere that costs, you know, $90,000. Well, for that $90,000, how many more acres of land could I have bought? Right. Right? So I, I'm, I'm equating all this equipment, which would be fun to own, to, like, well, I could buy something very tangible with that, you know, rather than buying a tractor, which I really don't need. You know, we're not farming with recreational land, we're not farming vast acres. Right. We're putt putting around, planting a few food plots, doing a little cleaning out a driveway, whatever. You don't need expensive equipment. You want it. Yes. But you don't need well, it. Well, let's take a step back from that and talk about um, some of the advantages or the opportunities that owning that land does afford you from an equipment perspective. Um, so you you've bought this farm. Um, you now have uh, Schedule F income, right? So you're now you've You've now got a whole another um, aspect of your of your life and your 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 taxes that become part of the farm. So yeah. the unfortunate reality is most of the stuff I buy doesn't have very much schedule. Left right, <laughs> right, right. So that that is the recreational side of it. But yeah. I, on the on the tillable side of it, so we've got um, let's just hit that real high level, and let's say we buy a tillable farm. There, there's a number of different things that that we may do to improve it. Um, or even a recreational farm, uh, we've got, you know, different expenses that are going to come with that, um, whether it's, you know, putting in new tile, um, fixing the old tile, maybe the fences need yeah, repaired. That's right. um, you know, we've already touched on equipment a little bit. Most people that are buying uh, tillable land to operate themselves, they've got the equipment that's right. figured out. That's, that's so that's not, that's not really a new thing. The tile would probably be the biggest thing on, on tillable that would surprise a person. You know, if they're not, because you can look at the fence when you go to buy it. And you go, yeah. oh, you know, the fence needs work. My neighbors have got cows, you know, whatever. Um, but you don't really know the condition of the tile until you've owned it for a while. Correct. So a couple different mm -hmm. things with, with tile itself. And number one, it's a, it's a depreciable asset the year that you buy it. So that's, that's a, a tax benefit for a buyer, um, right? So if you buy 100 acres and you've got 100 acres worth of tile, yeah. you're able to allocate a number as a tax deduction on that purchase. Um, that's going down a rabbit hole, so yeah, we'll, no, we'll no, stay it's, off it's of that. Um, but even if you upgrade it, then all you're doing is you're upgrading the amount you can depreciate. Absolutely. You know, so you're still getting some tax benefit from spending that money. Correct. Correct. So that, so owning land, we've talked about the benefits of it and why people should get into that. Um, obviously, there's some tax benefits to these expenses um, if you've got other income to offset. That's a that's a key yeah. part of it. Um, but owning land let's let's look at a recreational farm what would you say bill are you you bought a recreational piece of ground mm -hmm. what are the necessities as far as equipment ownership mm -hmm. and what are the wants what are the wants and, and yeah. needs well in, in you know you got me thinking real quick about and i'll touch on this before i move into that is what are the surprise expenses i think people are shocked at how expensive it is to plant food plots Yes. You know, because you can't plant, like, I, I can't say how I want to say it, but you can't just do a bad job. It, it, it's, it has to be the same way that the farmers do it. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything. Correct. You can't spend half as much on corn and expect to get half as much corn. You spend half as much on corn, you get no corn, right? So right. in order to get something to grow, you got to spend a lot of money on it. And that really surprises, I think, people that their food plot budget is way more than they thought that it should be. Yeah, and that's, that's a big piece of it, too, because not only... You know, we start talking corn and beans. We're we're going from a recreational um, buyer 
can't to, afford it. You, yeah, you because you gotta you've either gotta find um, somebody to help you plant that, mm-hmm. um, fertilize it, spray it. Yeah. You know, you name it. You could you could rack up. Oh, a yeah. six-figure budget and equipment oh. just for 10 acres of food plots. Yeah. Pretty quick. Oh, for sure. And, and like when I first started buying uh, recreational land, corn was $1.75 a bushel. Yeah. You know, so what were the inputs? Super cheap. You know, nobody could could sell $1.75 corn and make any money if the fertilizer was expensive. Right. Or the pesticides, herbicides, all that stuff was expensive. Well, so I could plant my food plots then with a pretty minimal budget. Well, now with $7 corn, yeah. everybody else is soaking up as much of that as they can. So now your inputs are that much. Well, they don't say, well, the food plot guy gets his fertilizer for less. He's still paying the same price that the $7 per bushel uh, corn guy is paying for it, but we're not selling our corn. Right. So now that food plot became so expensive. Um, so you look for alternatives, you know, like what else could I plant there where I don't have to go into, you know, competition of, of being a conventional farmer mm-hmm. because it's too expensive if you're just going to leave it for the animals. Uh, so anyway, that was one, because I think people will be shocked if they're not careful. They're like, oh, man, I'm going to have 15 acres of food pot. Well, you better get your bill full. Or, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yes. And it, if you're going to do it right, yes, you know. That's right. So that's one that surprises us, surprises us. but also, uh, you know, your question about equipment. And um, you can get by really cheap on equipment. Uh, you really can. I mean, you can get a... a Twelve thousand dollar tractor and a you know a little cheap disc. The only thing that's going to hurt you a little bit is going to be a no-till drill if you mm-hmm. go that route because it's hard to find those used that are any good. Yeah. You know, a, a little four-row corn planter. You got three grand in that. You know, and you go through the list and you're up to like thirty thousand dollars of equipment, and that's if you buy everything that you need yourself. Right. Um, so any, I don't think you get killed on equipment, but you have to realize that going into it. Either got to find somebody in your neighborhood that will do it for you, or you're gonna to have to buy it. Yeah. So I, I think that, that obviously is the two separate routes that that someone can buy is is plan for a budget to um, contract that out. There are lots of guys out there that will come um, that have, have made the leap to buy the equipment that will come and uh, um, plant that stuff for you, help yeah. you fertilize, help you help you spray it. Um, but there's an expense to that, and then. You know, the other side of it is is jumping in and, and owning it yourself. Mm-hmm. And the range of what you can buy there, uh, like you said, you can buy a, a, a brand new green machine and yeah. have a lot of a lot of money tied up to that. Or rather, you know? yeah, exactly. Yeah. But going back to the, let's say whether it's low end or high end, what are the the required pieces of equipment yeah. that you need as a recreational landowner from yeah. your perspective, Bill? I think the minimum is you need to be able to spray. Okay. Uh, you need to be able to mow, and ideally you have some type of tillage. And, and I feel like a rototiller for most people on the on the food plot side of it, the recreational landowner mm-hmm. side, is better than a disc or something like that. Because you know you can pull a five foot rototiller with a thirty eight horsepower or a fifty horsepower tractor. Yeah. You know you don't need to dig into the ground deep. You just spin it. You know two three inches in. Now you can broadcast your clover into that and move on. Uh, ideally, you would have some kind of a planter. Uh, a no-till planter. I mean, you can get, like I said, let's say a cheap four-row planter, uh, 30-inch rows. You can plant corn and beans with that, and you can broadcast your clover and your turnips and stuff. You know, with a little hand spinner or one that you run off the back of your yeah. wheeler. You can get by really cheap, but you can't get away from needing to spray, mow, and probably a minimum amount of tillage. Um, and I could broadcast corn if I had to. You could, yes. And you can broadcast beans if you have to. Mm-hmm. You don't have to put it in with a planter. You just got to get it out there in some kind of a uniform way and get it buried. Um, so you can go super cheap, um, but it's not as much fun. I'm living proof that you don't have to spend a bunch of money on it. You know, because that's I've got very little in equipment, and I'm having a you know a successful mission on recreational land. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Anyway, don't let it scare you away. No, it's, it's, we talk about these unknowns so that uh, people are aware of them, but yeah. at the end of the day, they're, the unknown expenses are choices. Yeah, that's right. And, and uh, that's how you got to look at that. Yeah, no, good point. All right, well, wrap it up for us. Well, you bet. Well, that, uh, how am I going to wrap that up? Um, so, yeah, hopefully you're, you're able to get something out of that and glean uh, a little information we of value worst, to you. We are the worst at staying on topic. We are. What did we even talk about? Something about it costing money to own stuff. Yeah, yeah. Land, I think. But it's worth it. That's what we got. All right. <laughs> Enjoyed it. Hey, coming back. <laughs>